coming. Oh my god, you guys, I am so excited right now because in the studio we have Kimmy Daly. Let's give it up. Kim Daly, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Ah, uh, that is awesome, man. Anytime. So how how's your week been? What's been going on? Work, kids, stress, life. The life of an artist, the <laughs> life of a man, the life of the life of someone in the rat race. The life of life, yo. Yeah, the life of life, the life of living. The life of living. <laughs> um, so what what's your real artist name? Do people call you Kimmy Daly or do they call you at Kimmy? What what's what's your um artist well, so, name? So my artist name is Kimmy Daly. Okay. Um and Kimmy Daly is my surname. Okay. Um, Kimmy is a family nickname that was given to me pretty much from birth. I'm I'm only my real name when I'm in trouble. <laughs> All at work. Cool. But 99% of the time I am Kimmy Daly. Um and I like to think that my music is reflective of that. I'm not trying to put on a facade. You're not going to listen to my music and be like, nah, Kimmy and the real person are two different people. They are the same person. Okay. Okay, that's a that's a weird one. That is kind of thing because I've always just been told to um, you know, fragment the different personalities kind of thing because you know you've got like the producer, and then you have like the singer, and then you have the rapper, and then you have like the one that engineers, and then you have the business person that goes in front of all the labels and say this is my shit kind of thing. Like listen to it. So it's always it's always uh, it's almost like a fragmentation for me personally kind of thing. So I, I it's refreshing to know that um, for you. It's all encompassing the one person. How yeah. do you find that then? Like doing all that as just uh, as, as just the one person, it's or the one persona, I should say. It's hard, and I'm and I, I'm honestly say one of the biggest hindrances is doing stuff by yourself and not having a team. Like like you said, uh, it would be a lot easier if we had the management, mm -hmm. the, the people to talk to the businesses. Uh, we have the, the in-house producers, or the in-house engineers, um, in-house stylists, and the whole team to, to put together what we see on MTV, for example. Yeah. If if we all had, if every artist had that team, every artist would be in a much better position than they are currently. I hear and that. Myself included. So let's go back. Um, how long have you been doing music? How long have you been rapping and like you know producing and stuff? So I first started producing when I left school and got into college. So I was sixteen. So we're almost almost twenty years. Okay. So I'm not going to give away my age too tough. But <laughs> almost twenty years. So what was the spark? What was that? Um, that catalyst. That got you to say, okay, this is this is what I want to do. Drive around with my dad on the school run or wherever. Okay. Because it was just music. Everything me and my dad did together, outside of sport, was music. And when I say music, it was literally just driving around, listening to his favorite albums at the time. Eh? What was those? So, what was those? The English is so terrible. What were those? So, so I was raised on everything Babyface. Okay. Yes. Everything, everything Teddy Riley. And yep. everything Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh God, yes. So if, if you encompass everybody who Babyface ripped for and everybody who Teddy Riley produced for, that's, that's a big span of artistry who I was I was raised on. That's a crazy that's kind of thing, but I haven't heard you do any um new jack swing. I need to hear that from you kind of thing. Teddy Riley is one of your art is one of your inspirations, you know what I mean? Yeah, kind of thing so, like so some if, new jack swing on the go. So if I had the voice, I've got the pen, <laughs> but I do not have the voice and if I could knock out them songs, you know rap a new jack a new jack swing beat? That would be interesting actually. It would be interesting, but it's not what as 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 a, a Teddy Riley fan, a New Jack City boy, and it it's not what I want to hear on a New Jack City. Boy. <laughs> like if I could pull out the Michael Jackson vocals yeah, yeah. and a Teddy Riley style beat, 
you know what? I'd be all over it like cheese on chips. <laughs> I, I do not have that range. I do not have that in my uh, my artillery. So you mentioned like Teddy Riley and baby faces kind of thing, and um, and them lot from the eighties and the nineties, really and truly. Um, who inspires you? Is that who inspires you? Is that like where you get your inspiration for your music from? Um, at the core, yeah, probably. Um, with Babyface, uh, Babyface's ability to to write about love and touch on feelings of emotion, um, Teddy Riley's even his ability to to produce them kind of songs as well. Um, with that being what I was raised on, essentially R and B is is the core to my music mm -hmm. um, and largely my content on top of that I, yeah it's, it's, it's rhythm and blues i'm talking about heartache i'm talking about breakups i'm talking about falling in love and sneaking around trying to get love and whatnot so essentially i'm just a rapper with an r b heart nice Nice, it's the best way, it's the best ones I, I think, kind of thing, because I'm an artist baby, I grew up on the, um, <laughs> <coughs> the Jam and Lewis's, um, the, what they're called, kind of thing, um, you know, Puff Daddy and his um, bad boy crew, yeah, the so so the, Steps, the shy, kind of thing. She made the previous like, so so death. I, 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 I love them. For that. Like oh, for the what? shiny suits of bad boy, I was there for that. Yo, it was just a, it was a legendary time for those guys. You know what I'm saying, kind of thing. And um, because they incorporated so much R and B in their music, and I love R and B as it is, kind of thing. So that was just my genre. It, it may like especially Puff Daddy and the whole bad boy era at the time in the nineties, any. Mm hmm. I feel that they commercialized rap and hip hop. They did. They made it accessible for for women to now sing along to, and it and and without without that 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 venture, I'd have, I'd have still been listening to a Tribe Called Quest and trying to be on my kind of fun loving, conscious and whatnot. So <laughs> yo, thank God. The fusion of R and B and hip hop came together because I am here for it. I am still here for it. Twenty years later, I'm so still true. trying to, still trying to do 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 R and B and hip hop together as best as I can. The thing is, like, even though it's twenty years ago, so there's a research. You think there's a resurgence these days, kind of thing of the music from the nineties. You know, we were talking earlier on about Beyonce and how she's done a whole renaissance of the nineties, um, like. Uh, dance and funk kind of thing that we used to hear in the clubs, and she's that. I, I think we were talking. I, I, I said to you that I personally think that she did it for the gays, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. So, do you think there's yeah. a resurgence of 90s music that's coming back into the mainstream because of there's, like your kids? There is the resurgence of, of, I don't even want to say like just 90s. But the resurgence of like say the two thousands as well, mm. so with the likes of the H and R D sampling flowers and Ashanti respectively, mm -hmm. um, it's coming back. But I think the way it's been sampled and redeveloped and reissued is trash. <laughs> Honestly, um, there's not a lot of R and B now, or even hip hop rap now that that i look to and find inspirational there's been very few albums in the past since lockdown we'll just narrow it down to lockdown there's been very few albums that have inspired me there's mm -hmm. been very few artists that have inspired me to pick up a pen dust off the the keyboard dust off the, the drum machine and get back to me there's been I can probably name two artists, two albums that since lockdown I've been bumping like and it's been inspirational, like man's been man's been ready to pick up the pen and like, yo, okay. I've got an album for you. I've got an album for you. Um I'm gonna give it to you after the show kind of thing for you to listen to or stream it, whatever kind of thing. But speaking of music, let us go into your one of your tracks kind of thing. So
Yes, that was Lalo by Kinney Daily featuring Inks and Jekko. You see, for me, that track here, you know what it's about? It's the keys. It just gives me that gospel vibe. It gives me that, um, and also the sample, you know, the, the Vox sample that she's got, you know, the, um, mm. and that. Tell me about the track. So the track. So, okay, so the track is... B23, Erdington's finest in it. Myself, Inks, uh, and his family member, Jekyll. Um, I don't know what the family relation is, but I know their family in it. Um, and we linked up one time through a connection, Phantom, Ambitious, producer. Um, and yeah, they, they presented me with the tune. He present, Inks presented me with the hook. And I was like, yo, let me jump on it, please. <laughs> Um, the tune got recorded, everybody was happy, excited about it, and I was like, yo, I, I want to throw it on my project, and I don't know which project, but let me take it, run with it, we'll split everything equal ways, and, it, and let me see what I can do with it. Okay. And everybody co-signed it, um, so that's how that came about. Um, but yeah, man, real life stories, isn't it? Real life stories, my verse. Um, yeah, real life, read into it, listen to it, read into it, digest it, real life, um, I'm not chatting no breeze on that one. So, yeah, you're talking about real life on there and I heard some of the lyrics kind of thing, so talk about some of the challenges that you've faced kind of thing as a musician, as an artist, trying to, you know, emerge on this, on, on this, on this music scene. Um, so, when I, so, I, I left school, Studied music in college, left college, studied music at university, dropped out of university because I thought I knew better. Um, stayed in London for a few years, networking, developing myself, my sound. Um, came broke, <laughs> came back home, innit? Came back to from innit? And then continued developing, continued finding myself, finding my sound, finding my style. And whatnot, and I think one of the the biggest the biggest challenges that I found is coming from a time without social media, and now being into a time where social media is so prevalent. I was anti-social media when it kept, when it was introduced to us. Couldn't didn't have time for it. <coughs> couldn't be bound for it didn't see the need for people to know about my personal life on a daily basis. And largely, I still have them same same thoughts and values. And mm -hmm. I mean, as much as I'm an artist and I'm a creative, <coughs> excuse me, 90% um, of my life, I'm working and I'm a father first. Like, when I do music, it's essentially it's my hobby. It's, mm -hmm. it's what I do when when I'm in my downtime and I haven't got daddy duties. I haven't got work. This is music's what I like to do. So because because I'm not a hundred percent focused on music because I have external obligations to maintain. I can't 
put my all into it. Because as we discussed earlier, being a one man ship is hard. It's difficult. Hard. It's hard to do everything by yourself. And I said, if we all had the team, like a manager, a stylist, a videographer, a photographer, da, 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 someone just, I, I, I hear social media account things, people run people's social media accounts. If one of the men don't want to do that for me, ain't it? <laughs> for, 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 <laughs> for free. <laughs> yes. Like, I understand them. It's one. like um, I watched the, the Kanye documentary on Netflix, the trilogy. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that stood out to me was Kanye's bedroom was so invested in Kanye that he, he just quit his job, invested in a camera, and dove in at the deep end and it I'm not brave enough to dive in at the deep end. Okay. See, like because we're on the subject of internet kind of thing and social media, so do you think it's a hindrance or do you think it's has it has its advantages kind of thing as well? Because I'm of the same mind as you. I'm a child of the 80s, I was born in 1980, god damn it. And so um when I was growing up, there wasn't no such thing as going on. I mean Back, like say, in my 1996, 97, we got the internet kind of thing, and it was a whole dial-up thing, and there was ICQ, but we weren't standing on ICQ for like hours upon end kind of thing. It was like this like live chat thing that you can see the people mm. typing. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you know, out three years after that, MySpace came. But I, the way I grew up, kind of thing, even back in the day, we weren't on the phones like that. We were outside playing and shit. You know what I mean? Like when you, were selling, when you were selling records, when, when people were selling their records, they would go on tour and sell their records on a stand fucking at the goddamn uh, uh, concert. Do you like know what of, I mean? One of my inspirations in hip hop, like not musically, but on a business sense, is Master P. Yeah. Because his whole story was he made his first meal selling mixtapes from the trunk of his car. Well, that, 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 those were the stories that that we were brought up on that mm -hmm. inspired us. But now, people are making 15 second videos and going viral. And, and it's only that 15 seconds that they're getting viral for because if they made the whole tune, the people aren't used to listening to the whole tune. And I'd even argue prior to, to social media and the 15 second viral fame, and before, before that, you had the X Factors. People wanted their five minutes of fame there. And people were doing the utmost to get an X Factor. Yeah. And people were voting for it. Or people were tuning in and they're getting their ratings and X Factors now, what, 20 seasons deep or something? So. Didn't know for the started social media, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Well, pretty much. Wow. God. Yeah, so do you think it's a hindrance or do you think it's like um, for you kind of thing in your life or do you feel like it helps you a lot with your um, marketing and your PR and stuff like that when you're releasing stuff? So for me, I don't utilise social media to, this, to any advantage. Um, if I've got something I want to put out, it's literally one post. Okay. And once that one post is out there, that's I'm, I'm, it's, I'm done with it, innit? Like, I'll put it to bed. Okay. Like as soon as okay, as soon as something gets posted on social media for me, that product is done and dusted. So when the album gets posted, boom, the album's out, guys. Here's the link. Go buy it, do your thing. I'm on, I'm on to the next thing now. <laughs> okay. But I've already started creating, planning, um, doing what I need to do behind the scenes to to get the next project underway and finalized. Um, but then it goes back to what I was saying, if I had a team and somebody was sitting on my social media and posting up like a hundred video clips for promotion for one June, cool on it, but I ain't got the time in day to do that. Yeah, I mean, like I barely find the time, it's, it's completely craziness kind of thing, and I, should, yeah. I know I'm supposed to utilise it even more than, I'm, than I am now, but I like, I literally have a life and... Mm. Um, and I need to live and sometimes I need a break away from the screen because you know what I mean kind of thing like I'm here and you know like you do for Sorry me to cut you off, but, but 
the key thing I think you said there is to break away from the screen. Editing. Yeah, man. And ultimately, I like I like to make music to listen to music. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned this earlier as we was on the way here. Um, I was saying since the internet, even before social media, but since the internet and like post MTV and music videos, people have stuck listening to music true through their ears true 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 people, it's now through their eyes yeah people now watch music people's videos will hit a million streams before the audio will on soundcloud or bandcamp or whatever because people are digesting music through their eyes and not their ears yeah so for me i i'm not interested in 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 the visuals so much like I've got visuals out there, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I ain't putting no money into it, any like yo, my bridge is that cameraman, fifty pound here, hundred pound there, da 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 da. Videos edited myself, da 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 da. Or if I can't be bothered, or I've got an idea that someone can do it, yo, there's fifty pound here, there, yo, make this work, can it? I just think you have doing it on the cheap and cheerful because the visuals for me, like I remember the days where. You'd be lucky if an album was released and it had a video. Yeah, true. It's true. Like the, the most like SWV, yeah, like, like um the visual like, content. The visual content to accompany a single or an album was to open up the C D case and take out the sleeve. The, take out the sleeve and you'd you'd see the pictures that were in there, a little write up, you see the credits, it may even have all the lyrics printed, but that was the visual accompaniment to the album or single. Yeah, until Michael Jackson and the um, Barry Gordy's kind of thing and yeah, then yeah, yeah. and just came and uniformed everything and made everything like but essentially, visuals. But essentially, you had to be a top tier artist to be getting them videos. If you didn't have the money and the backing <laughs> and whatever, your visual representation was the CD sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like that. <laughs> like I don't like I don't have to be in front of a camera all the time exposing myself on big screen, little screen, medium screen. Like my, I want my audience to listen to my music. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to watch my music. I want you to listen to what I have to say, listen to the music, listen to the instrumentation. I hear that. I hear I, I hear you. It's just that um because I've just studied the shit kind of thing, it's like, and it's, it's almost forcing me to be more strategic about the way that I release music. Do you know what I mean? To to because to be able to have like capitalize on your streams, you know what I mean, kind of thing, and get some kind of revenue for crying out loud, um, we have to, you know, what I mean, like follow what the kids are doing. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, yeah. and it, and and it is much to my chagrin that we have to. But we have I'd say to. My biggest marketing tool is an old school tool that probably people don't utilize, but it seems to be working for me. What's that? Emails. Construct a very good email with all your links, a press writer, a free song or two, and send it out. And that is. The majority of my promotions i've got an email list every time i get a new project I get, a, I get get someone to do me a press write-up copy and paste that into the email post all the links and just send nice done nice and sometimes that's the best more effective way as well kind of thing, because you're getting into people's personal emails you know what i mean yeah yeah like if you've got the email list and you got the contacts like for, for me i'm not saying i'm i'm balling I'm not living no mansion, you're not gonna see me on GR in daily flossing no diamonds. This is the thing though, I feel I feel like you're the kind of person that even if if like or when you have that I'm, kind of money to spend, I don't think you'll be like that either. No, I wouldn't. But what I'm, what, but my point is what I'm doing now is bringing me back a return of investment. True. Do you release on Bandcamp or do you release on um you know the other um, DSTs? All of them. Okay. All of them, like release them independently or myself. I need to try Bandcamp. I haven't tried that yet, kind of thing. I was a little bit dubious because I was going through my first release the other day, and um, 
I didn't know what to put it on because the marketing team that I hired, they wanted it all to be on Spotify kind of thing so they could track the amount of streams that it was getting and shit like that kind How of thing. How did you do all that on Bandcamp? Like literally just whatever price you want to put it on, on the Spotify so that Apple or whatever to sell the single or product. Price it there. Mm -hmm. And if, if your marketing team really want to give them your account details, they can log in. Sure, and track it that way. And literally, like, collate the same data and information, and it's it's there. True. But I mean, and I mean, you get more capital from bank company. I think they only take, what, what, 20%, 30% or something like that? Um, I know with, there's been a fair few months, especially during COVID, and they haven't been taking it happy. Mm. So, so anything, you could, so during, especially during lockdown, bank would, have been giving two, three months and... Do you know who's good for that as well? Sound On, have you heard of them? Mm -hmm. So Sound On, yeah, they're um, a new distributor and they're basically the ones that TikTok, they're in partnership with TikTok. And so when, and what I've been finding, oh, and it's such a nightmare kind of thing. So I've released my stuff through DistroKid. DistroKid is released it on a, and everything. But when I go onto like TikTok or uh, Instagram, um, they're telling me that my motherfucking music that I'm promoting, that I'm releasing, is copywritten and i have to fucking find um a letter i have basically have to draft a letter to fucking meta to tell them this is my shit and you stop fucking with my post yeah and then to yeah. tiktok that just hasn't worked with them kind of thing so what would sound would sound on they release because they're partners with like with, with tiktok kind of thing your stuff gets released on tiktok kind of thing after a while okay. and so you can like basically go there and actually use you know, like your shit as a sound in your videos kind yeah. of thing because i still want people to actually listen to my music mm -hmm. like man don't give a shit about it Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just throwing it out there like, anything, um, anything to do with like, like instagram promotion facebook promotion tiktok promotion any 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 handheld device promotion, I do not care. <laughs> like, talk to me when you want to come put up my poster on a billboard. And <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Then mine's only like, <coughs> apps and that, like, yeah. Let, let me throw my one post on Instagram and be done in it. Let's be cool, done. cool, <laughs> cool. So, what would you be your dream collaborations? What, uh, collaborate with me as an artist or yeah. to listen to as a consumer? To collaborate with as an artist. Um, okay, Prince. I'm okay. Gonna throw that one out there. Uh, whether it be as a producer or as an artist, Prince would have to be number one. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he was just too good. Yeah, he was yeah. a genius, genius beyond his time. I don't think we'll ever, we'll ever truly appreciate how gifted my man was. Oh no, I, I appreciate him fully. Kind of thing. I'm yeah, a massive yeah. Prince fan. Yeah, I, I even <laughs> love, even, I even love all three films. And even one of them was very questionable. <laughs> I think all three of them questionable, I loved them all. Oh, kind of yeah, thing. yeah. All three were questionable. <laughs> right. yeah. There was Purple Rain. Um, that was Purple Rain. You, you can't say nothing about that. Um, Under the Cherry Moon, the black and white one. If, <sighs> if you're an artsy fighty head, which I like to think I was during my time at university, and it went out when I came across that film, like, yo, and it was Prince, yo. Yeah, man, I was into it, and then there was the what was the other one under 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 graffiti bridge. That was that was trash, man. That was worse than Moonwalker. <laughs> Moonwalker was bad, and I, I'm a Michael Stan. Do you know what the thing is? I didn't even watch Moonwalker because I was too freaked out at that no, time, and I still haven't watched it to this day because it freaked me out when I was six years old or seven years old when it came out. I was like, ah, uh, this is the most horrible, like horror film I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. you're not missing much with Moonwalker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's your um, next project? What's going on? Tell us about your next project that you've got coming out. So the next thing I've got me directly working on is uh, the volume two of my unofficial remix series. That it, okay. Uh, the, the first one's out now on all platforms, unofficial remix. Um, the next one, your two, unofficial remix two. That's what it's going to be called. Um, we're, well, I say we. I am just in the process of finding all the beats I want to remix and sample. Because um, that's the thing with my unofficial remix series. It's, it's all beats that I would love to have hit, heard myself on. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As a, 
as a, a signed artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. I often play those games, kind of thinking my friends then like, if you was to, if you was to write any song in the world, what would it be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my own favorite series, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. On the the first one, I covered Floetry Say Yes. I um, heard that. That was nice. Yeah, man. Real stories, man. Real stories. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a track by Masego, a track by Maxwell, a track by FAJ. Um, T Pain. I think that one got thrown on there. Um, and there was another one, so they were all the instrumentals or samples that we've taken to, to get that EP. Um, and it's gonna be the same again, just okay. different. The, the idea is to, to find a whole bunch of new artists, well, not even new artists, but old songs, old artists that I would have loved to have heard myself on, mm. record them out, throw that EP out there, and then we'll jump back into. A new album, of which is it's just an idea as yet. There's there's been no 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 footwork put into the album yet. I'm just focused on the EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, nice. Okay, then cool. So we've come to nearly the end of our little session. Oh, um, yo, thank you so much for coming in, Kili Kini. I really really appreciate it. You're yeah, very welcome. It's been it's been a pleasure to be here. It's been a, it's been happy to chat to you. Cool man, nice and good luck on the next projects and definitely we'll have to look out that kind of thing and um collaborate with some tracks and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah man, plug me in any beats, send my way, plug me in. Cool, cool, we'll do, we'll do. Alright then take it easy. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much, sir. <coughs> so we're gonna go to the next track and then we're gonna play Kimmy Daily. Yeah, I want to play melodies of a nice guy. You out there? Yeah. Rise with the sun, ready get fresh and I'm gone. Just like a nanny bird, I get the worm. At times it's been a struggle, persevered through dirt. Into the ends of the earth and back Now I'm on track 9 to 5 grind, I'm a hustle on the side Grown man swag with my queen by my side Future in frames, pictures Post a boy for the new G's of the era Gangsters and gentlemen Whether from town or London I teamed up with DQ and them We fit the new groove on them I brought it back home and now I'm shining like the sun on them Laid back and easy on a Sunday Kick back, relax, roll a split from Bun Grey Reflect upon my life and know today is a good day Melodies of a nice guy Always keep a smile as the days go by A hop in my step and a song in my head I never let a good moment pass me by Melodies of a nice guy Always keep a smile as the days go by A hop in my step and a song in my head I never let a good moment pass me by Thank you.